Okay. <laughs> We're just going to be laughing the whole time, aren't we? I'm going to try and be profesh. Darn it. At all. <laughs> no! That's hilarious. Okay. Hi, guys. Welcome back to Molly in Missoula. Today, um, we have Karen Schlater, my, my boss in marketing on the episode. Um, in today's episode, about a different thing is about kind of UM traditions and just how to have fun at UM. Um, you've definitely been like a good part of me finding my love for the university again and like not that I didn't have it before but <laughs> um, just like having that fun brought back to you I'm after COVID I think you've been That's like awesome. an integral part so thank you yeah. that means a lot to me I appreciate yes. that I didn't know you felt that way I really appreciate that yes <laughs> <laughs> don't make me cry we're live <laughs> um, yeah would you like to introduce yourself Yes, I'm Karen Schlater, and I am in UM Marketing, and I'm Brand and Student Experience, and the way I view my job is that uh, student experience is our brand, and so students should be having a good experience, so it's good to know that your experience is getting better and that I'm helping with that, because maybe I'm doing my job correctly, <laughs> or at least part of it. <laughs> um, yeah, I think you're doing a great job, Thank and you. <laughs> usually when students have crazy ideas they can just go to Karen and she finds a way to make them happen so. that's about right yeah. yeah without hopefully someone hurting themselves losing a limb or <laughs> doing anything too uh, too irresponsible <laughs> all responsible things and the other fun thing is we have matching sweatshirts on yeah go Grizz good old you can, Grizzlies <laughs> you can buy them at the bookstore I like this very good marketing right mm -hmm. there Yes. Yeah, this actually this is actually one of my favorite sweatshirts. I'm not just saying that. Kyle Wonders and I were talking about that the other day. How we love it. Trail Bundy, random shout out, has been wearing his a bunch, but it's actually really comfortable. But my favorite part is that proceeds of it go back to student groups. So always trying to figure out how to do fun things, how to do comfy things, and then how to have the money go back to student groups. Yeah, definitely. I this is my first time wearing it. I'm gonna be honest, but. Um, Kyle, every time I see him, is wearing this sweatshirt. But what do you think, though? When you say you're being honest, is it comfortable? It Can is you be very honest? comfortable. It's very soft. Yeah. I have a shirt under this because I had a presentation okay. before this. But Fair enough. I, it's very comfortable over my business professional shirt. So. <laughs> I like it. You had a bunch of scene changes already today? Yes. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Don't make me start laughing. <laughs> Okay, um, so you used to, when I first met you, or when you first started like working with the advocates, you were at the UC Marketing, mm -hmm. and how has it been like the transition to your new job, and what was kind of like the, the reasoning for the new position, and yeah. then also how did it come about to get you to where you are now of helping all these different student groups? Well, something to know about me is that I've worked a million jobs on campus. So for instance, I started in UC Event Services, which really helped me figure out how to book rooms and how to figure out if you need catering or UMPD or risk management. So it just taught me a lot of that logistical side of things. I was there for a while. Then I became the special events UC person, and that was just kind of absorbing events that um, no one on campus was already taking or creating new ideas and so people would come my way whether it be the director or someone else and they'd say let's do this thing you want to help with it and so then I'd help with it so that helped me get into these fun traditions and new traditions um, then from there I became the assistant director and then I became the UC marketing director and so I've kind of had a smattering of roles on campus all of which have helped me get to the position I'm at now which uh, Vice President Jenny Petty, when she came on board, she recognized what I was hoping would be recognized is that the student experience is super important. And so brand and student experience being, you know, the same, our brand should be our student experience, playful, um, formidable, uh, courageous, you know, basically like anything that we want to do to have fun, but also have people become good adults in the world, doing cool things, good things for the world. Uh, so she pulled me over to marketing, and that is how I ended up over where I am. Yeah, that's, I like Jenny Petty. She's cool. Me too. She's awesome. 
Good, you gotta say that. We're on the air. I know. <laughs> but it's true, too. Yeah. She has a podcast. She does? Yeah. I'll have to send it to you so you can you watch it. It's pretty cool. There's actually an episode for anyone who's interested that is about the brand experience role. It's a, kind of a new thing to campuses. Um, it's just acknowledging that brand and student experience are synonymous, and there's lots of work to be done. But it's kind of, it's not something that a lot of universities understand, and I've gone to do talks on it at CASE, which is a marketing conference, and she's done talks on her podcast, but I think more and more people are going to realize that marketing authentically is the way to get students here, because if we're not actually having a fun time, if we're not actually taking care of our students, then people will see that, the students will see that, and they won't, they won't want to come. So essentially my job is retention-based as well, um, but wholeheartedly, I and Jenny and others, we just want the students to actually enjoy their experience, as you know, yeah. so that you stay and you can look back and have a great experience and look back as an alumni and be proud of your time and come back and hang out and go to homecoming or whatever sort of thing you want to come back for. But most importantly, go out and get a job that you'd like based off of the good experiences that you've had here academically and floating down the Clark Fork River. Sponsored by Karen Schleter. <laughs> <laughs> No, I think you guys have done a good job of doing it organically, too. Like, not to just hype you up, but, like, I think that at one point, like, brand experience, stuff like that was so pushed of, like, we want everything to look good, not just, like, at a bunch of different businesses and when it first started coming out. Mm -hmm. And now it's just done organically of, like, what people want, and you can brand that however you want. Yeah, I mean, really, what it comes down to is just having meetings with people. And if there's someone out there listening to this and they're like, well, my experience isn't being shown or showcased or elevated or helped or whatever, like, I want to hear about that. I want to know what it is that you need, what it is that you want, because that's how I figure out. I mean, I do not know what students want. Just, I mean, I, I do know that students want to be heard. I do know that students want to have a good experience, but I just don't assume that I know what that experience is. So I have to have a lot of talks, I have to have a lot of meetings, uh, meet with student leadership, pretty much just listen to anyone who's willing to talk to me and figure out like what does that mean to that person. It's gonna change every semester, it's gonna change every month. Um, sometimes I can get lucky and stick with a trend for a year and do yeah. something, you know, the bucket hat lasted for a few years, friendship so bracelets, many. <laughs> right, you know? But at some point we just gotta let the bucket hat go, you know, and I find that out, and maybe it's not time to let it go. I don't know, you tell me, that's my point. I, I have to, See, I have to have lots of meetings to see what's still cool, what's still needed, and not all of it is fun, you know? Um, it could be diversity programming, and diversity programming could be fun if it's done correctly. But my point is, is whatever the, the basic needs need to be met in order to be able to have fun and do some of these experiences. So sometimes it's going back to the basics and being like, what are the programs we're lacking so that students can feel supported in basic ways so that we can get to the place where they're floating down the river or attending the bonfire or things like that. So you're not involved in a lot of those talks necessarily, yeah. um, but there's a lot of behind the scenes work and committees that are figuring out what is needed to be done on those levels so that we can get to a place as a university to have that good time and to feel yeah. good about each other and to collaborate and things like that. Yeah, I feel like the, the students are just the idea factories that just say, we want this, and then somehow it magically happens and we don't <laughs> think about how it magically happens. We're just like, yay. Well, that's, that's the goal, but I don't want you to sell yourself short. I mean, there's a lot of like the students put in work, the students put in time, I can't go out there and wear this sweatshirt and, well, some staff and faculty might think I'm cool or whatever, and maybe they buy it because I'm wearing it, but overall the students see students doing things, and without having you all do that, then none of this would be happening. So definitely don't sell yourself short. The student workers are the best. Thank you. <laughs> um, okay, so I kind of skipped this part, but you're, you went to UM. No, I didn't. Oh, you didn't? No, which I'm I super did. sad about, honestly. Like, yeah. I personally didn't love my college experience because I didn't find my people. I had a lot of friends. I had a lot of great groups. But I do feel like it wasn't, like, UM is what I would have wanted, basically. So that's the reason I'm so passionate about it as well. You went to school in Alaska. No, no I went to okay. school in Missouri. <laughs> really? Yeah, isn't that wild? You, this is you about to, to go down a giant rabbit hole, these questions you're going to ask me. <laughs> Wide open. I grew up in South Florida. 
I moved to Nebraska, I went to school in Missouri, and then I lived in Alaska for 10 years. And around all of that, I traveled the world for nine months. To Australia. Australia, all over Europe, Budapest, uh, Singapore, Malaysia. We got lots to talk about, Molly. Yeah. <laughs> open, open it up. Open up the rabbit hole. That's wild. How, how did you get from Missouri to Alaska? So Missouri, years. going to school. I went to school there because my grandparents were there. And as you probably know, I'm obsessed with my grandparents that live here. And I was obsessed with my grandparents that live there. And so I wanted to be near them. But ultimately, my grandpa gave me permission to leave. He was like, are you just hanging out here for us? And I was finally like, yeah, that's what I'm doing. And he said, just go wherever you want to go. So I actually spun a globe um, and kind of landed on that. But I had a friend up there who got me a job in the whale watching industry. <laughs> and <laughs> right. I, might, I haven't told you about this. Um, and so I worked on a whale watching boat for a few summers and I bartended and I worked at the legislature and what else? Oh, and I worked my final job there. Well, I did a million jobs there because everyone does. But my final job there, that was my real job, was when I became a float plane dispatcher. So I worked for a local company for eight years, I think, as a float plane dispatcher. Mind blown? Yes. <laughs> Kyle and I the other day were talking about how you didn't major in marketing in college and then I just I don't I just thought you magically ended up here after you left Alaska. I did magically end up here. I followed a man and it didn't work out, but I found my best friends, like all the people that I could ever want in my life. My grandparents moved down here after I got settled. But yeah, and the the interesting thing about I did go to school, but I didn't go for marketing. But the authentic, organic part of it is the part that I, I feel like if you are actually trying to be authentic and organic and showcase that, then that is marketing. And so that's the way I ended up here. Yeah. I, being in the marketing, like, degree path, I think it's, it's cool to learn all of those things. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, like, some of the, like, your position, you don't need a background in marketing because you're just trying to help yeah. other people. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the, the tools in a marketing degree are awesome, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm lucky that I work in a team where they the people have around them, yeah. me have those tools. Yeah. So I can do what I'm doing. I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing without the students, obviously, and then the marketing team. Yeah. So, you know, I have a writer if I need it. I have social media person yeah. helping out. Um, I have all those things, so I don't need to know how to do all those things. Um, I just need to know who can help me do all those things. And so recognizing what my weaknesses are, which is a lot of things like writing and pretty much everything else except for being authentic and trying to figure out what brand experience is. Um, but having a team makes it so that I don't have to, to worry about those things. But a marketing background, I would have loved to have now gone back and yeah. had a marketing background. It's a fun program. Shout out to my class making us do this podcast. I'll go back to school. I'll be doing this with you. You're going to have to come on yeah, my podcast. There we go. <laughs> Mario will love that. It's like, who's Karen? She's, <laughs> yeah. she's in my class now? You should audit this class. <laughs> oh, can I do that? Yeah. I would love to do that, actually. You Mario, should. I want to do that. <laughs> he has to watch this to grade me, so. <laughs> I would love to actually, in general, know more about this whole program. I'm not just saying that because I'm on this podcast. Um, but that's what I love about my job is getting to know different programs, academics and otherwise, where you can you can figure out how do I incorporate what's happening in the classroom as the brand experience? So like I said, it's not just like floating down the river or bonfire and fireworks. Like most of your time is spent in the classroom yeah. or, you know, sleeping essentially. So I'm not going to focus on the sleeping part. Well, maybe you don't sleep that much. That's a problem for <laughs> students. But my point is, is the classrooms are obviously the most important and I don't always focus on that area and I would love to incorporate it more. Yeah. That's one of my, um, the old business advisors. Mm -hmm. She is auditing the data analytics class, oh, nice. which is where you like learn how to code in oh, a bunch of different fun. languages. And she was saying how she was really scared. And she doesn't get graded because you just are auditing the class. Yeah. And that's a really good point. I should do that. That'd be so awesome. You should. You could do uh, intro to marketing or something. That would be too. that'd be amazing. Well, and honestly, 
part of, I would like to say my charm, but maybe I'm wrong about it, is kind of how dumb I am about marketing sometimes. Like, because then I can lean on trends, you know? I could be like, how do you think we can get this done? Yeah. And, and I'm being serious because the TikTok or the, you know, we should just use Facebook for everything, Molly. Am I on it? I'm totally kidding. For parents, kidding. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, but that's funny though, because when I first started doing marketing, like Facebook was the thing. So long story short, you have to be willing to adapt and learn. Hey, Facebook has better Instagram Reels than Instagram does. See, I'm relying on you to tell me that. Well, I personally think that, but it could be, it could be wrong. <laughs> what you tell me is truth, okay? I can suck down the rabbit hole <laughs> deeper. Um, I think it's funny. On all the other episodes, I've t talked about how, like, I met the people that I brought on, and I knew of you through Ben Rodhead. Yes. Um, from our spring retreat when you guys had some retreat at uh, the biological station. Yeah, I think I was at, like, women's leadership yeah or something yeah and he showed us a picture of you with a turkey hat on <laughs> <laughs> my proudest moment probably yeah and then i was like who is karen Schneider? <laughs> and then i had no idea who you were and then last year i was trying to do a win a scavenger hunt that we apparently cheated at because we had like 20 people doing it but um and you were like what's this thing about this thing and yeah and then it was the pumpkin thing or whatever yeah. <laughs> And then I asked you for a job, and here we are. I know. I think you like. I think you like came, and I don't know how much I'm allowed to talk about this, so feel free to edit it out. But um, you came and basically complained on my couch with someone for like an hour, and I was like, I like you guys, or whatever. <laughs> I could be getting the sequence of events wrong. That might have been before the other one. Uh, yeah. Well, no, I met you, and you're like, what are you? What's the pumpkin thing? I was yeah. gonna bring that up because I'm ah! like, oh, bad friends. <laughs> I'm trying to be more diplomatic. <laughs> Thank you. I enjoy that. Well, long story short, you came, complained a lot, and then got a job. And that's, like, my MO, essentially, is, yeah. like, if... Well, I left, and then I asked for left. a job. Yeah. In between... <laughs> I basically created a job for you, and, uh... Appreciate it. Here you are. And that's, and that's all about evolving, too. No, it's great. I absolutely love when people can come and complain I hate I mean complaining sounds mean or whatever but constructively discuss. criticize yes exactly <laughs> I'm like all about that whether it's aimed directly at me or something else it's it's good to hear because if not it's just everyone saying it behind your back and how can we help change it yeah. if, if we don't know what the, the issue is and I do not pretend to be able to fix everything or know everything or any of those things but whatever I potentially have this sphere of being able to help and there's so many on people so many people on campus that do you want to help and if you get them together then they're ready to to help out however is needed so we just need to know yeah I definitely agree it's just all about reaching out or looking up people or yep. even like talking to your professors during office hours you never know yeah where that's gonna go but yeah yeah crazy where the Brantley water spewers on the wall <laughs> Is that what they're called? I don't know. What are you talking? The Brantley water spewers? I met you because we were doing the the challenge where you had to kiss the um, the man on the Brantley. Oh thing. yeah. What's that thing called? Um, it's like a water spigot. Sadly, I should know, but I don't. It looks like it's, it. it's not my favorite tradition. Apparently, if I don't know what it is, <laughs> but I know what you're talking about. And I remember meeting up with you and then realizing you were the pumpkin people. I was not. I just <laughs> me and. Today's Brooke's birthday, which is kind of fun. Brooke! Yeah. Oh my gosh, Ben, Brooke. Yeah. Wow, that's awesome. Um, Yeah, but she was the pumpkin people, and I just, we were all, we staked out for the pumpkin. I remember For now. six hours. Yeah. Through the night, and it, then we didn't get to see it because they were revolting. Yeah. And I lost so much sleep. <laughs> see? Sleep. And that's why we... Not going well. <laughs> in plain. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, it's all like one big, happy, confusing memory, because I remember all of it, but it's kind of like, you know, I'm just glad you're my student worker now. Me and then when too. you graduate, <laughs> I'm going to cry, like, oh my gosh, it's so sad when things work out and you graduate. Maybe <laughs> one day, Kyle will work here. Kyle, me. you, Ben, Brooke, we could take you all back, if you want to come back. <laughs> Uh, I think I need some experience in the real world. Okay. And maybe I'll, I'll venture back to, that seems smart. to Montana. Go to but Alaska. Where are you going to go? Am I allowed to interview you? Where do you sure. want to go? <laughs> I am moving to North Carolina. Okay, for sure. Yeah. Okay, well, we can get back to this. Yeah. Your podcast. Pretty serious. <laughs> that's amazing that you got, that you're already, like, fully decided. That's, that's really cool. 
it's kind of scary. Yeah. But my dad, he is excited to make a cross country road trip with me. Yeah. And my mom is gonna fly down and meet us because she doesn't want to be in a car with us. <laughs> <laughs> she loves us, but as a mother, I can understand. Yeah. She also isn't gonna take like a week off of work to drive. Yeah. To North Carolina. Which but my dad. Fly, yeah. He has so much vacation time, so he's like, let's go! <laughs> That's awesome. I'll have to keep you on. If, uh, if I get to North Carolina, I'll look you up. Yeah. I, uh, Emily runs, like, the alumni board or whatever. Oh, yeah. And I, last year, I was like, well, I want to be on it. How do I be on it? And she was asking where I was going to end up, and I said this out, and she said, well, we need people from there. Seriously. So I'm going to try to join the alumni board. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so funny. Yeah, I, I was just talking to someone more about the alumni board and how I might be able to help them, so that'd be cool if we get to stay in touch and do stuff through that. That'd be really fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll just be planning er everything in the North Carolina region. <laughs> Love it. Okay, that'd I don't be know a great actually excuse. how it works, but... Me neither yet, but we'll figure it out. <laughs> we'll ask a lot of questions. We'll be authentic yeah. and organic. Yeah. And also I, strategic. <laughs> and collective. Creative. And collective and courageous. Yeah. <laughs> I should have brought my brand pillars to, to spice this up. That would have been funny. <laughs> <laughs> I just barely made it with a sweatshirt on, okay? I, I had to, I was walking in today because I'm dog sitting right now. Nice. And so I had to like bring everything with me and so I was holding the tripod in the sweatshirt because I had to have a blazer on this morning <laughs> and then I held the door open and I didn't know who it was but it was one of my other professors when I turned around I was like oh hey <laughs> and he was like what's all that stuff for and I was like <laughs> my life <laughs> I'm filming a podcast <laughs> my favorite is when Kyle like ran in the zoo crew meeting and he was wearing one outfit and then he like changed into his bibs in the meeting and then left <laughs> the and then had to do yeah like i was like this is yeah these are my people he went to go run three miles with <laughs> oh his gosh. roommate's girlfriend oh my gosh yeah see this is what i'm talking about for the students so like that kind of commitment is really cool it doesn't seem like it would make a big difference but like having on the overalls or having the props or whatever you know it's it just makes it so fun and makes people actually pay attention to the different things we're doing. So yeah, I'm sure this is going to blow up just because these sweatshirts that we coordinated. I think so too. <laughs> <laughs> Please do like when you did the Grizzab shout out to me. That was when you like mentioned it about the Grizzab. Well, we kept article. talking about it, and then you just like cut it out. So I was like, she just snuck it in there, like a little one instead of a one-two punch. <laughs> it was like a five punch. I was like, she was interviewed, and I was like. Yeah, and she hated it. <laughs> <laughs> well, seriously, though, I don't usually do stuff like this. I'm doing this for you because I try to stay as behind the scenes as possible. I know that's hard to do when I'm in charge of a bunch of committees or part of a bunch of committees. But overall, I try to keep my name out of the paper. I try to keep my name out of just anything, really, because... Maybe the Kaiman will pick this up. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um and not because I don't, like, stand behind what I'm doing. It's just because I feel like there's better voices to talk about. Like, if it's a student program, a student should talk about it. Or if it's a, I don't know. There's just so many other people that could be better, like, faces than me. I just want to be behind the scenes running around in my little sweatshirt. Yeah. <laughs> I think that as much as the four of the zoo crew people are outgoing, we don't like to take credit for a lot of things, too. So I yeah. understand that. But you're the reason we can do what we do because you give us money and because you <laughs> support like us. Your mother. <laughs> Literally, yes. Um, my Montana mom. Oh, that's awesome. My Montana kid. Well, other than my actual kid. <laughs> lives in Montana. <laughs> you're a lot less sick and I have to do a lot less feeding of you. Well, I do feed you a lot, actually, too. We should get yeah. something after this. I'd be down. <laughs> Just keeping us nourished. Yes, I mean, I need you nourished to do your good work. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds funny. <laughs> so I don't know if this is. Hello. Hello. Will you say something? Darn it. At all. Ah! <laughs> no! That's hilarious. We do have all of that. Oh, okay, so it's on there. Yeah, but it's not going to be on the mics it's because it wasn't mics. recorded. <laughs> Oh. oh my god. This. Oh. What's doing the feedback? Probably because we laughed so hard. That was crazy. They're probably like some <laughs> people cackling into their mics. 
Oh, I press play. Hold on. I am doing the. <laughs> this is so embarrassing. I thought I was good at. <laughs> it's all Hello. Good. Can you hear us now? I can hear you. Okay. I think we're good. I forgot to hit record. That's so embarrassing. <laughs> We just sat down and we were like off to the races. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, <God>. shoot. <laughs> <sighs> should we should we do it again? That was like four, thirty minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Could you submit this and then this? Well, I'm gonna do whatever we have left and just put it over the rest of the video. <laughs> and I'll I'll, fi I'll figure. I'll just I'll interpret your voice in your side of the uh, thing and be like. You mamba mamba ba voiceover of your Oh my part. gosh, that's so funny. Okay, I cannot wait to see this. I'm not gonna actually do that, but it'd be really funny. <laughs> I'm like wah 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 wah. You know what's funny though is like this is okay, so when I'm doing programs and things like that for the first time, I always go do them first. Like I did the Cam the Cats mm. uh, food drive at the tailgates to see what would go wrong with that and it actually went pretty well. But Anyways, these are the sort of things that you just don't anticipate that yeah. happen where it's like, that's why you need that extra camera. That's why you need the whatever. And so it's so funny, like what'll go wrong that you don't and you could have everything set up and then you forget a button. Yeah. And so I've been there a million times and just winging it is like, well, don't be embarrassed on my account. I, I mean, won't. solid gold that I just had has gone to waste, but whatever. No, it's still picked up by two cameras. There you go. So the audio... <laughs> <laughs> the audio is still there somewhere <laughs> but now i don't have to layer as much together when yeah, i edit this so that's, that's a win well i think she did a great job for what it's worth mario give me an a no, just <laughs> this is a material um also thank you because when mario told us that we had to come up with a niche idea you gave me this idea <laughs> <laughs> well selfishly i like to tie things together so yeah. it's fun to be able to it it's fun to hear like what you would even cover in your your podcast because then that's interesting to hear like how you did find your community and and who you bring on your podcast and of course Kyle was there and you wore your little banana costume and it's <laughs> and awesome. I lost. That was because of Kyle's mom. It was. Everybody's I mean, like, "Did you win?" My professor, oh my gosh, uh, for uh, information infrastructures, he's so good. He teaches the data analytics class oh, nice. too, but he's awesome and. Um, I was like, can I present to your class? And so I presented to every <laughs> single one of his classes that he teaches. And he would, like his data analytics class, I went to both sections. And then I went to my class and presented. And I was like, you can't vote for anybody but the banana. Yeah. But the rest of them are on this thing because they have to be. Yeah. And that's hilarious. <laughs> and then he, the next day after the cat grizz, he was like, did you win? And I had walked in late. So the whole class looked at me and I'm like, no. That was so sad, yeah. honestly, because the whole feed was like banana, 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 banana. It's okay. And I'm just a sore loser. But you raised a lot of money. It yeah. was really cool. And we annihilated the cats. Like we did. We did by, it was like 300000 Physically 000. in football and physically yeah. in canning them. Can, yeah. Food. Physically with cans <laughs> and cash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we did such, it was so good. The whole campus community did awesome. Like the student groups did so much work. ASUM did work. Zoo crew obviously did work. Running across the field, getting tackled by Monty. I was actually worried about Dom. I'm glad he's okay. That yeah. video was brutal. He afterwards, because we were both working that game, and so we had to just like go from bananaing to being professional. <laughs> bananaing. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great verb. <laughs> I was bananaing last week. I tried to explain to my family what I was doing, and they were like, I don't understand yeah. why you are wearing a costume. Also, yeah. I have those costumes at my house. Oh, yeah. Thank you. I need those back. Yeah. I meant why to don't bring you bring them, them today yesterday. with everything else? You yeah. had your scene change. Bring the costumes. I should have worn that again. <laughs> um, no, I meant to bring them yesterday, but I forgot because you're busy, and finals are coming up, and we're doing this podcast, and you're working for me and Zoo Crew. You don't have a lot going on. No. I also have to work at my other job after this, which is fun. I forgot about that job. How's yeah. that going? It's good. I like have only been twice and it hasn't been for very long because mm. so I've just done the onboarding stuff. But I'm gonna like be able to do 
like help with their social media and then nice edit their podcast oh. when their podcast Hopefully editor play. goes on <laughs> well no it's already filmed i just <laughs> have to just cut kidding. it together but um their podcast editor is going on paternity leave oh nice so. cool. i try to keep up with you but you're just like too much of an overachiever so i can't keep track no that's not true but i just don't like free time yeah but I, I did that. spend three hours painting a jacket the other day. So Painting a jacket? Yeah, I, I'll show you. Yeah. It actually looks really cool. Also, I'm going to make something like this. I had the idea, but then they posted it. So I already had it going. Dang. But I'm going to make like a zoo raft. Oh, cool. Which is fun. That's awesome. But. Oh, cool. Yeah. Wow. You did that? A little. That's impressive. Yeah. And then I'm painting like the front with some different things. But I had this jacket for over a year. And then I went to Clemson, and my friend's neighbor painted her a jacket for Clemson. Oh, sweet. And I was so like, I need to it. actually do it. Yeah. <laughs> and That's amazing. So I have just been hoarding around this jacket that I never wear so I could paint it. And now it can be your year. theme jacket well, when yeah, you're I'm doing your I alumni wanna... stuff in North True. Carolina. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. yeah. I was just going to wear it over my overalls. That works, too. To yeah. add a little more pizzazz. Yeah, more pizzazz. Mm-hmm. Bibs are not enough pizzazz. It's true. They're not. <laughs> I feel like we should we should pizzazz them some more. I mean, the crazy hair, the bibs, the banana yeah. bananaing. <laughs> also, the other day we had a uh, pajama game at oh, yeah. the basketball I game. Wanted to go to that. The volleyball t- no, is that basketball? Yeah, the volleyball team and the soccer team showed up in pajamas, but they didn't sit in the student section. And Got then it. the there was maybe two other kids besides me and Kyle that were wearing pajamas. So it wasn't quite. I wore a onesie, so I was just walking around Missoula in a onesie before the game, and then I put on the crazy hair, and I just looked insane. I wish I could say that was weird, but I can't even tell you how many times I've been walking around Missoula in a onesie. Like, I can think of at least 10 times off really? the top of my head. Yeah. For what? Runs. Oh, uh, yeah. Halloween, obviously. I'm yeah. a baby every year because I don't want to actually be cold, so I wear a onesie and just, like, carry around a bottle, and That's it's just costume. easy. Yeah. And just other reasons. I've been in a onesie a lot. So I, you you guys, I understand. Like, I understand Zoo Crew and people like you that like to do scene changes. Like, I'm all about, like, costumes and randomness and yelling at people to get them to support you. And maybe not yelling at them, but yelling towards them. Yeah, that's true. Yesterday, um, we went to do the tabling in the UC, mm-hmm. and nobody came up to us, Aww. obviously. But that was okay. Because we just started, like, being like, you going to the game? Are you going to the game? See? And people are like, no, I don't like football. And we're like, or they're like, no, I'm not going. And we're like, why not? <laughs> why are you not going? <laughs> Come they're on. Like, we have to work. And I was like, on campus? Because you could definitely get that off. If yeah. <laughs> <laughs> people support the game. Yeah. Um, but it was funny. Um, okay. We got really derailed. Yeah, by what my, are we talking about? By my non-recording <laughs> this episode. <laughs> Oh, goodness gracious. Well, now I know to never do that again. But um, so since your job is about traditions and fun things in general Mm -hmm. and making fun uh, things happening and making fun of some people sometimes like us running around in costumes, (laughs) um, what is your like favorite tradition that you've helped create? Gosh, um, the thing, the tradition that I'm most proud of reinvigorating lately is can the cats because it's such a good tradition it in on a lot of levels like it's amazing that we're raising money and food for our community campus community and our community and just being able to have campus involved in that means so much because we're such a service oriented school and the need is so big now it's like more and more people are using the food pantry using the missoula food bank And so for me, I mean, to be honest, if we lost, I would have still been happy because we just did such a great job. Every year, I'm always impressed by what we as UM are able to contribute. But the fact that we won by such a large amount and that it was just so fun. Like, I loved the costume contest because it's just ridiculous, you know? Yes. Um, (laughs) You you can't not get into it. Like, it's fun to donate to. It's fun to see people running around in costumes. It makes you wonder why. Even if people don't donate, it makes them think about food insecurity, which is, I think is, you know, a lot of college students think about it all the time, unfortunately. Yeah. But those that don't have to think about it, think more about it. And it's just, it's like a good educational tradition. It's a good tradition 
for service and it's just honestly a lot of fun i loved going to the esports um smash brothers event i brought my that grandma you were actually good at yeah that was hilarious like but i can't I'm glad you're not able to hurt your opponent because I think I was like trying by accident to punch my opponent in the face over and over. Yeah. And then you guys came by and kind of told us what was actually going on, which was nice, but I did not know where Kyle maybe was. was Yeah. But anywho, like that was really fun and it's cool to see how much esports does. And there was literally like 30 events that happened. Admissions did stuff the buses, ASUM transportation did stuff the bus. Um, ASUM proper did their neighborhood food drive like it's just so cool to see that many people doing good things and then it's just like fun to have street cred and just beat the cats street cred yeah I'm all about the street cred as you know (laughs) said no one Um, but yeah so that's that's been my favorite recently but to be honest I have like a million favorites like freshman float has been super fun to be part of because it's just such a unique tradition that I don't know of any other campuses that have it I'm sure maybe someone does but like it in the the feat to send hundreds of students down the river is is large and I'm just glad we can pull that off in a safe way and people even if they don't have a great experience they still bond you know because like I've been in the the river and been cold so people get off and go I'm freezing but they talk about it they laugh about it it's like a bonding experience so that's amazing um just helping with zoo crew and like solidifying that as a tradition going forward to have that be part of our campus has meant the world to me um you're the only ones i get up for consistently at 8 30 to come to a meeting we appreciate it overachievers <laughs> it's our only free time <laughs> exactly yeah and uh just so many things honestly there's there's so many wonderful traditions that that we have on our campus the ice rink coming back that was really fun to be a part of and to see it continuing to be a part of it um what are some of your favorite traditions i'm curious if i'm allowed to grill you back (laughs) yes um i think the ice skating rink is a good one because that came back during covid Mm -hmm. that was kind of like i don't know covid's are like it's such a crazy time because yeah i feel like we didn't get to see all the like powerful traditions and like the powerfulness that um has because you weren't allowed to do anything or you were allowed to do very small gatherings and stuff like that. So I think that that was a cool thing to be able to see the Disney on Ice people out there. Yeah, that was amazing. Yeah. And then, yeah, now they're back on Disney on Ice, which is cool. So cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They did a little pit stop at UM. Um, so that was cool. I love the pumpkin. I'll die yeah. for the pumpkin. The pumpkin's so fun. Yeah. I want them to put, after they put one on the, s- the front spire last year, I want them to start spiring every spire with a pumpkin <laughs> look at you i mean that sounds super easy not that i can scale main hall but <laughs> if they're already up there why not just put one on all five i'm sure steps? it's super easy whoever it is yeah i don't know we did a lot of deep diving into i know who it is you all are like sleuths yeah there's a kaiman article about how they do it too which oh I really think, yeah i've seen that off that's how it. that's how we had to plan where we were staging <laughs> <laughs> i love that well and i want to say real quick just because depending on how you worded the question, I can't even remember. I am not like the one who single-handedly did these traditions or even thought of these traditions. I've just been part of these traditions. So I have a laundry list of um, tons of people that either had the idea or helped implement it or whatever. So I definitely don't want to like claim that I'm the one who did those traditions, by the way. It was that you got to be a part of, I think. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Because it takes literally a million people to get things done, which is awesome and hard so i want to acknowledge that a lot of people go into these that is true i don't think anybody could just produce any of the the big things on their own here and if they are good for them yeah (laughs) (laughs) um yeah and then what is your not like a tradition that you're not a part of that you like to watch happen every year homecoming i mean i feel like i mostly sit back and participate in that uh hello walk is done Mm -hmm. by the advocates and alumni alumni. yeah and homecoming itself is done by alumni the parade i mean pretty much all of homecoming there's lots of things within it that i help get to alumni like say there's something going on during alumni week like a hockey game or something then i'll chat with hockey with tucker and say hey, can you make this like a homecoming themed game and then put it on their schedule? Like I'll end up orchestrating to make it a helping it be a robust homecoming. But 
that is not that much work and alumni does so much work yeah. during that time with a bunch of other people so homecoming in general is just an amazing tradition that I just get to sit back and enjoy yeah that's this year was the first year that we have got to experience the parade and it was so fun yes like so my, fun. my parents were at that game and so they got a sit down there and watch a parade that they had no idea what was going to be in it <laughs> and then <laughs> they got to see all the forestry stuff and that's awesome monty riding a horse yep and yeah it was really cool but hello walk is probably my favorite tradition oh really awesome yeah i forget about that one and then somebody brings it up and i'm like oh yeah 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 because but. it's just good vibes i love all the traditions that are good vibes that it's just it makes you feel that magical feeling back to the brand experience like that's how we want people to feel when they go to these things. Like when Gabby said during the meeting that at the bonfire and fireworks last year, that was like her first introduction. Yeah. And she was so proud to be here. And wow, this is an amazing community. They're like, lighting things on fire. They're lighting things on fire and blowing <laughs> stuff up in the sky. Yeah, that's like, I want people to just have those good feels when they come to this because of visuals, because of community, because of feeling part of the community. Like those those are all the brand experience that, that Jenny Petty recognized um we should be focusing on and, and we were focusing on them but with more institutional support yeah definitely so i am very excited for the bonfire this year me too we gotta I didn't start get talking to go about that last year so i i just gotta live through the instagram yep <laughs> but i'm so excited we're gonna have some big booms big boomers big booms big fire on the oval ice skating rink next to it unless there's oh. something i don't know about melt the ice yeah well gosh not that close that would be bad but i'm okay. assuming the ice skating rink will be up and going barring some sort of climate issue which is possible with us but <laughs> at least it'd be warmer i guess for the bonfire fireworks sure. but you know things like that the it's going to be a lot of fun it's yeah. going to be bigger and better so you won't you didn't miss anything last anything else you would like to add I guess just that I'm humbled to be on this esteemed podcast. Super esteemed. Despite the fact that I'm not a CEO, I'm very oh my blessed gosh. to be here. No, much better. Oh, thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. You didn't have to say that, but I Well, like I it. just acted like it wasn't as good. I was like, <laughs> Justin has CEOs. <laughs> hey, I'm actually really happy to... That is something I'd like to add. I am happy to be in this position. Nothing against CEOs, but I love working with students. I love working in this environment, and it's just so cool to be able to work with students like you. And, yeah, I'm just excited to be on the podcast, and let's get some brand experience. <laughs> I think I've lost it at this point. <laughs> if anyone wants a job, email Karen. Oh, yeah. Shout out. If you, I'm looking to have to replace Molly and Kyle after next semester, which is really sad to me. So if you are looking for a marketing job and like to do random things, please let me know. I feel like we don't really do marketing. We just do like random things. You do my version of marketing. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Brand experience. She's like, can you guys go take these signs apart? And we're like, yes. Like when Ben first met me and I swear he was like, this is the marketing director. I am so confused. She doesn't know anything about marketing. And look, here I am. Yep. <laughs> There you and are. He drank the Kool Aid. He got. He aboard. did. He did. <laughs> he did drink the Kool Aid. Thank you so much for yeah. for being on my fourth episode. <laughs> <laughs> I have to film one more next week so I can finish my project. Ooh. But then I think I'm going to keep doing it because I like talking to people. Yeah. And this you is learn fun. that people are from Missouri in Florida mm -hmm. and randomly ended up in Missoula. Yep. I've been in a hurricane. Really? Mm hmm. Wow. Yeah. Maybe we can go get a coffee and talk more. We. We could. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Thank you so much for being on the podcast. Um, next week, I'm interviewing my roommate, Beth, um, which is kind of fun. And that'll be the last episode for this year. But, yeah. Thank you for being on the podcast. And, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Goodbye.